Hi everybody, this is Patrick from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is the seventh tutorial video uh, for our electronics learning board. The electronics learning board has 20 plus projects and it can be pre-ordered right now at EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Links below. Uh, we're going to talk today about, the power, about power supplies and 5 volt regulators. The, the uh, learning board has a 7805 circuit and uh, we're, we're going to quickly talk about it. Uh, a lot of digital circuitry, at least older digital circuitry, requires 5 volts to operate. If you exceed that, you will potentially harm the chips. You won't potentially harm the chips, you will harm the chips. A lot of the old chips are very sensitive. So, the nice thing about the 7805 is it's very, very simple. Uh, it's a basic component. You have, you'll have you add some uh, ripple and, and uh, or sorry, filtering and, and decoupling capacitors at the input and output, but that's a different story. We'll get there in a minute. There's three pins. Pin 1 is on the left, pin 2 is in the middle, pin 3 is on the right. The back is, uh, with, has a, there's the t a hole in the top, and that's actually connected to pin 2, which is ground. And so this is so you can heat sink it if possible. If you're drawing a relatively large load at pin 3, or if you've got a lot of voltage being dropped and you have a, lo a large load, this will get very hot. And so if you heat sink it, you'll get better, uh, you'll get better regulation. If you don't, eventually the voltage of the output will fall. Now, depending on the manufacturer, there's many companies have manufactured this, and uh, and uh, I believe that the maximum output current is between one and 1.5 amps, uh, depending on on the manufacturer. However, if you do heat sink it, you will get much better results if required. Now, in the case of the learning board, we get nine volts of pin one and 5 volts uh, regulated to pin 3. Pin 1 is VN, pin 3 is our regulated 5 volts. And so we've only got 4 volts being dropped across it and our load is uh, less than 100 milliamps max depending on what project we're going to be doing. Anyhow, this is the physical look of it. It's a, I believe it's a TO220 package uh, and you can plug it into a breadboard. This is the uh, more or less the schematic symbol for it. It's the schematic symbol I always use. Pin 1, pin 2, pin 3. And we're going to use this in a second when we make a quick schematic. Uh, uh, for Fairchild, they're one of the manufacturers for I believe for Fairchild, the max input is 35 volts. So you'll have 30 volts dropped along this to give you a remainder of 5 volts. You wouldn't be able to, to put much of a load of the output at 35, at 35 volts. So, anyhow, your output range minimum is 4.8 volts if properly heat sinks and you're not overloading the system. The minimum is 4.8. Uh, nominal is a 5 volt output, and we'll measure in a minute. And max is 5.2 volts. Again, that range I, I think will will differ depending on which manufacturer you use. Anyhow, it's a very inexpensive part, and I use them in everything I do. Everything I do, 5 volts, 5 volts, 5 volts. So. Let's quickly do a schematic and we'll talk about a power supply. Okay, so on the electronic learning board, this is the schematic. Now let me explain it. This is our DC jack. Um, there's maybe a, perhaps a different schematic symbol for it. I often use terminal blocks, so that's what I'm using here. So, you know, you'd need a, uh, a positive input for and a DC ground. So this is consider this our DC jack. Uh, we have a, it comes with a wall transformer, so you plug it right in. The wall transformer turns 120 volts AC into 9 volts DC. So this is our ground reference point. Anywhere where you see this uh, upside down triangle, they're connected together. So here is connected to here is connected to here and here. Anyhow, this is our V in line. Now we're not going to use this for many projects. We're going to use it for one or, or two projects. This is, uh, on the board, we actually have a few points where we have access to the unregulated 9 volts coming from our DC supply. So we've got a different reference for it. Two upwards er upward arrows called V in, or often V plus. That's fed into the first pin of our power supply, and, or sorry, our 7805. Pin 2 is grounded, pin 3 is regulated to 5 volts, which we call VCC. So anywhere where you see this reference, VCC means 5 volts. We've got two capacitors of the output. Um, we're going to talk about why we don't have capacitors here in just a second. This is a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. The uh, top is the, the flat end is the longer lead, the positive lead. 
the short lead is actually noted by a little bend here. That's the negative lead, which is connected to ground. Uh, if you turned that around, it would likely blow up when you powered it up because it is polarized. And this is a t uh, 0 0.1 microfarad decoupling capacitor. It's ceramic and both leads are the same size. There's no polarity. You can plug it in either way. And that acts to filter out any additional ripple caused by the power supply and, uh, and to decouple any high frequency signals. It's a very important component, this one right here. Actually, they both are, considering we're using a, uh, a wall transformer as opposed to a battery. Batteries are much more stable. But regardless, the only reason we don't have the same uh, filtering and decoupling network here is because the application we're going to use for VIN is for a motor. So we don't care about stability. If it's 7 volts, if it's 10 volts, it doesn't matter. Not really, not for our application. But if it did, we'd probably have the same network over here to make VIN much more stable as well. So it's very, it's very simple. Uh, if you've been following my videos, you'll see, you'll know that I've been putting together a seven-segment display, <coughs> excuse me, timer, uh, or a seven-segment display using a uh, 555 timer, 74LS93 binary counter, or decade counter, and a 74LS47 uh, BCD to seven-segment decoder. And we need a 5-volt supply for that. Up until now, I've been using my DC power supply. So what we're going to do is we're going to bypass the power supply, which I, I would have just had here as 5 volts, and bypass this. Uh, now I'm going to put 9 volts on my circuit, add a 7805, add these two components, and then we're going to get a nice regulated 5 volts on our supply. Now, do keep in mind that if your load, whatever VCC is loading, it is consuming a lot of current, and you do have, say, 12 volts here, or even up to 24 volts, you'll have a lot of loss. Uh, do, no do note that this will get hot. Um, and if you plug it in and you don't see, you see zero volts here, it likely means there's a short, and this will get really hot very, very, very fast. Something to note. Let's see it on a breadboard. This is the circuit that we've been building, and realistically, we shouldn't be adding the 7805 last, but... Um, it's perfect now that I, I actually decided to make this video because I've got 4.8 volts on the input. I want to put 9 volts because that's what the electronic learning board is using through that DC jack right there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a uh, 7805 right in here and I'm going to connect the regulated 5 volts to the power line. The power lines are right here and right here. So I'm going to be Placing this, I'm going to change this with the voltage on this pin to, to 9 volts. Place that on pin 1 of the 7805. Uh, this is my ground pin. I'll have that on pin 2, which is our ground pin. And I'll have that connected to the network, the ground network as well. And then pin 3 will go to the main supply lines. So let me power, let, let, let me put that circuit together and we'll have a look at it. So I've got my circuit right in here. I know it's a jumble of wires. This is why I made everything so much nicer on the board, <coughs> on the learning board. Uh, so the circuits in here, the two capacitors are right below. We're going to test the range. It's unloaded right now. 4.96 volts. Falls into the range very, very close. So what we can do is connect our ground to ground output to our power line and we can connect our ground there we go works like a charm I've got 9.3 volts at the input the regulator is bringing it down to 5 volts now we can test it we can test the, the voltage after it's loaded by putting our right our our uh, negative probe on uh, for our, our digital multimeter on ground, and by testing pin three on the regulator. Four point nine seven volts looks great, and the power supply is reading sixty milliamps. So sixty milliamps to drive this circuit. So uh, I hope that uh, has helped the, those of you who have never used a 7805 before. I remember how excited I was in school when we, when we brought out the 7805s because I was tired of using 5-volt uh, AC wall transformers. They drove me nuts. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for, for a video of uh, 7th, or, uh, sorry, <laughs> 
our uh, eighth video on uh, voltage dividers, and we'll also do a video on the sensors and actuators of the electronic learning board. So thanks for watching, everyone.